So today we're talking about the Bartik Research Design or the Shift Chair IV Estimator, which is a very, very influential method in economics right now, which is often used to understand if supply drives demand or if demand drives supply. And I'm going to use one specific example. It's a paper by Yaravel in 2019 who uses this research design. So what's the research question of this paper? The paper asks, how does demand drive innovation or the supply of new products? And here's a bit of background on this. We care about this because innovation decreases inflation for people. Yeah, let's say you need to buy a cell phone and it costs 500 euros and now there's significant innovation in cell phones. So the cell phone only costs 300 euros now, right? This de decreases your inflation. And the problem with this is that, of course, rich people have more demand for stuff than poor people. So if innovation really decreases inflation, then rich people profit from this more than poor people profit. So if there's an overall inflation rate of 10%, rich people will have a lower inflation rate and poor people will have a higher inflation rate. So if we actually think about indexing social welfare instruments, we might have to think about different inflation rates. So that's kind of the background of the paper. But let's get into the research design. So we want to understand how does demand drive innovation or the supply of new products. So we have two types of data. We have consumer segments. So those are segments with different age and income. And he has, I think, 108 different segments. So one segment might be age 18 till 25 and income um, 30 to 40,000. Then the next segment might be 25 to 30 and income with 40 to 50,000 and so on. Okay. And the second type of data he has is actually scanner data from supermarkets with product segments. And they are, dis they are segmented by type and price. So maybe we have deodorant, and then we have deodorant for under a euro and for over a euro, over one euro. Okay, so this is the data we have. And here is the identification strategy. So we have different product segments, as I've just said, right? The product segments of deodorant for under a euro and deodorant of, of over a euro. And we have different consumer segments, right? Our rich consumers in the age bracket of 25 to 30 and our poor consumers. And what we now want to understand is how supply changes or how the supply of new goods changes driven by changes in demand. So what would that be? That could be a very effective deodorant, which is driven by very strong demand in deodorants, right? Strong demand. And what are we interested in? Well, we're interested, of course, in the coefficient. So how strong does demand drive my supply? And what is the obvious problem with this equation? Well, the obvious problem is that we don't know if demand drives supply or if supply drives demand. Well, it could be that there is more demand for deodorants and that's why the companies start to innovate on deodorants and try to grab a lot of those of this increasing demand. Or it could be that there's this new innovative deodorant and now a lot of people start buying deodorant. So what's really driving the beta is not the change in demand, but the change in supply. So we need to find a trick. And the trick is, of course, the shift chair IV estimator or Bartik estimator. So here's how it works. So let's, or let's try to think about demand a bit more. So how can we think about the change in demand? The change in demand XL is given by the change in demand in the individual consumer segments. That's why we sum over every consumer segment. And we can further decomp decomposite this um, into three components. The first component is the change in the number of consumers in the segment. Right? If we have more old people, more people will buy old people's products. Right? Maybe we have a society that is aging, so the um, number of people in the older consumer segments grows over time. Change in the number of 
people. Then, of course, we need to understand, okay, how much does a given consumer segment, which we denote by N, contribute to the demand of a product, right? So parents in their 30s contribute a lot to the demand in diapers, right? People in their 70s don't contribute a lot to the demand in diapers, which means, and this is what the SNL, so the initial share in spending represents. So this is the share in spending. And GNL is the change in spending habits of a certain consumer segment over time. So it could be that maybe 70-year-old 70 70 year people start playing more video games. So they buy more video games, change in spending patterns over time. And if you look at those three components, two components are very e are rather easy to measure. So it's easy to know how many number of people are in each income and age bracket because we know how old every person is in a country and we also know roughly what people earn in a country. It's also easy to understand what, init what shares in spending are at a given point in time, right? We know how much people in their 30s spend on diapers, right? What is hard to understand is how people change their spending patterns over time, because for that we need consumer surveys and so on and so on. So this variable is actually hard to measure. So in our instrument, in our shift JRV instrument, we're only taking the first two variables into account. So our instrument is the sum of the shares, the spending shares for a given product times the change in the number of people, right? And this is where, why this instrument is called shift share design. So our instrument sums up the shifts and the shares. So let's try to think about those, those specific components in the context of the paper. So the shares are the spending shares per household group. And we remember, we assume them to be constant. And what you see here is a graph from the paper and actually actually shows that spending per age income group for different product segments is constant over time, right? So if I have spending per capita of $1 in 2004 to 2006, I will have a spending of per capita of roughly $1 in this, pro in this product group in 2013 to 2015. So we assume the shares, and this is very important in the shift share IV estimator to be constant. And in our given setting, this seems to work. Second thing we need is the shifts. And this is actually where our variation comes from. So turns out in America, we have rising inequality. That means that we have more people in the richer parts of the income distribution. And that's where our exogenous variation or shift come from, right? And what you see here is household income and a density function. And you see what happens if we have 2% of income growth over a period of 10 years, what you see is that the distribution shifts so that there are more rich people or in our research design, more people in the, in the upper age income bracket, right? So what can we do? Well, we can actually use our instrument to run a regression. And this regression uses our instrument, our shift share instrument, right? The sum of spending shares and change in the number of households per age income bracket, um, which tells us, okay, what do we think is the increase in total spending of an age income bracket over the given time of the study? And we regress that on how many new products are developed in this product segment. And what we find is, and this is the magic number of the paper, we find a positive and very significant relationship. Right? And what we say is this is actually a causal estimate. So what we find is that demand drives supply positively. Right? And we can actually pin a number to this. Right? And remember, why can we say this? Because we say that the shock in the income distribution has nothing to do with supply. Right? The fact that there are more rich people in America has to do with how the social welfare system works, how wages work, and how 
inheriting works, right? And this drives the man positively. And what this says is that actually rich people get more innovation than poor people. And to go to the punchline of the paper, this says that poor people actually have higher inflation. Okay? If you have any other questions on this, please let me know in the comments.